In this video, what we're going to do is see how we can use our before and after track properties to manipulate our keyframed animations. Now, this could be to continue them, to make them repeat, oscillate, or even offset repeat, which is going to make us work a lot more efficiently and speed up our workflows. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So we're going to be taking a look at the track before and track after uh, options we have to extend keyframed animations. And so we're seeing examples of this here where starting with a relatively simple keyframed animation, you can do a variety of things to it, including making it continue, repeat, offset, repeat, um, or oscillate, go back and forth. And so it allows us to extend our animations without having to create additional keyframes. So let's go ahead and go through these. And so in this version of the file, I really just have kind of one part of the animation. So um, for our continue option here, the green object, it's just moving up a little bit. For the cube that has squash and stretch, it just kind of bounces once and we'll be able to continue that. For the bouncing ball, it's just kind of going up one stair and we'll get it to go up the others. Whereas with our um, pyramid there, it's rotating. We're going to get it to kind of keep rotating. And the way you do this is by opening up your timeline. And it really doesn't matter what mode you're in, though it can be a bit easier in F-curve mode because you can select individual tracks here. And when you do select an individual track, which you can do by expanding the property, or I'm sorry, the, the geometry if necessary, you then in your track properties get this before and after option. And what that allows you to do, if I just kind of zoom out of this animation, is do something before the animation happens or after the animation happens. And you'll see a list of all the different options here. Um, we'll be talking about all of the ones you see um, in the before section, though we'll be using them in the after section. They do work the same way. After is pretty much the same, though there is loop, which I will not be getting into because it's a bit more advanced. But um, if you understand these first few, uh, then the loop isn't too much more difficult to wrap your head around. All right, so let's start with this first one and setting this after to continue. Now, um, because this object was already keyframed, you can see now that the line after this kind of continues at the same angle it was previously. And what that means is if you hit play, after that little bit of animation, it's going to continue. Now, this won't happen and shouldn't have happened um, if this was a regularly keyframed object that has the slow in, slow out, or easy ease, or ease in, ease out, whatever you want to call it, um, on your animation, right? So even if I set this to continue, it's not really going to do anything because of that slow in here. Um, that's kind of not allowing it to continue. But as you increase that um, angle and work with that handle, you can then get it to continue and keep moving. And really this would make more sense in a linear animation, um, but I suppose there are options where you would want to have it start slow in. Um, and yeah, this is just going to go on for however long your animation is. And so these types of techniques can be very, very useful when you think the length of your animation might change, might get longer, might get shorter. You don't wanna to have to create more keyframes um, to fix that. So you set these two, can then adjust the speed using um, our handle here to adjust the angle and kind of go from there. All right, so that's a look at our um, first option, continue. I'm then gonna switch to repeat and just to take a look, this one's the squash and stretch. This is probably the most advanced one, but just to kind of see what we're, we're looking at here. Um, in order to make this work, um, I have both the cube itself animating up and down on the y-axis and I had to add some extra keyframes to make it work with the squash and stretch so it would stay on the ground here. Um, but it kind of starts and stops at the same point and that's what's gonna be important with this. And that is true not just for the movement on the y-axis here, uh, but also our squash and stretch, okay? That also kind of starts and stops at the same point even though the values in between um, can change. So. If we take our Y position, and I'm just hitting H to frame this, uh, for the after option, I'm gonna set this to repeat. And when you do that, you now get 
um, the ability to define how many repetitions you want. And if this is set to zero, it will repeat indefinitely. All right, so however long you know your timeline is, your preview range, or even if you extend it, it will just keep going. You can also specify the number of repetitions. And so if I hit play now, we'll see that the first time we do get our squash and stretch, but any time after that, we just get the position movement. And that's because we have to do the same thing to our squash and stretch. So this works not just on your position, rotation, and scale properties, but um, pretty much any animated property. So I'm gonna have to do the same thing on my squash and stretch. For the after, set it to repeat. And now, just doing one kind of squash and stretch bounce, I have unlimited squash and stretch bounces. And once again, if I want to specify a number of rotations, then I absolutely can. All right, and it's pretty much similar with our bouncing ball here for offset repeat. I just have one little bounce up kind of one stair here. All right, and if I want that to continue, can select both of our tracks at the same time here. And for the after, um, choose offset repeat so that it's gonna offset, but repeat that animation, right? So that's why it's gonna keep moving up, it's gonna keep moving forward and make its way up the number of stairs, okay? Now, since I didn't perfectly position this, you'll notice that it gets a little bit kind of closer each time towards the the top part of the stair. And if I had too many more, that might be an issue and I would need to be more precise with this. But for just this simple example, this works just fine. Now the problem here is that I have my repetitions set to zero. So this is going to just keep on going for forever, just like we saw with um, our previous example. But we don't want it to have an unlimited number of repetitions. We want it to have a specific number. And I believe that number is four for this. So I will go through and set that to four. And then what we'll see is that when it, once it does get to four, it stops. Okay, so once again, simplifying the animation process, really trying to use and create as few keyframes as possible uh, in order to make it easier if I do want to make a change or an adjustment to this, okay? That leaves us with our last example, the oscillate, all right? Very much um, kind of a back and forth. You could do this with a bouncing ball as well um, and you know have it bounce up and then have it oscillate back down. Um, but we're just gonna do this with rotation. So I'm gonna select my rotation property here from the dropdown in after. I'm going to choose oscillate. And you can see, and let's just frame this to make it a little bit easier to see, um, that it's I keyframe the first half of this movement. This could be moving up on the Y axis. In this case, case, it's rotation. And then it's gonna rotate back. And that's what we'll see when we hit play. All right. Now keep in mind, because I didn't add any kind of empty or, or time before or after where uh, it stayed there and wasn't rotating, that there really isn't any kind of pause here. But if I wanted to get a pause like that, what I would do is maybe set this to say, oops, um, set this to five, right? Set this to 35. And then on that same property, our heading rotation at frame zero, keyframe the rotation value at zero. In frame 40, when it's at, well, I really should be 90, um, but I'll go to say frame 40 here, set this to 90 and keyframe it. Try to at least, there we go. You can now see I have that dead space and it's going to, um, that extra time, that pause, and now it's going to take that into account with our um, track before option here, our oscillate, all right? And that is pretty much gonna do it, right? Plenty of different uses for this, examples, way to reuse animation so that we don't have to create a lot of keyframes. And like I said, it's gonna make it a lot easier when you do need to adjust the timing of an animation or when you don't wanna have to worry about the length of the animation, but that will do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to see, please leave me a comment down below. And if you could also like this video and subscribe to my channel, if you found it helpful, I'd really appreciate it. And until next time, take care.